How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week nine, and we're five and two, just on the cusp of being ranked. I think we're like 28th or something. We get to play a one in six Toledo. We're favored to win this game. Toledo, very similar in overall, better than us on offense, but worse on defense. Uh, and I'm not sure how I feel about their schedule. Their one win is against a one in six Kent State, which does not look good for them. But a lot of their losses have been really close. Three points to Rice, four points to Clemson, 10 to Akron. And then they got blown out by Bowling Green and Buffalo and NIU. So hopefully we can be like one of those last three. We'll definitely be looking to make this as easy as possible on ourselves. Recruiting wise, we do have some work to do. I went through and I just kind of emptied the board out of uh, players who were committed elsewhere. And then I filled it back up with guys who maybe we would have a chance with. I don't know if we're going to use the points on scouting them right now, but we'll just hope that having them on our board and getting those uh, weekly bonus points towards them will help us. As far as other players go, we're looking really solid with a lot of guys. Very likely to get locked out, I think, this week. Uh, yeah, this is week nine. So likely to get locked out with Craig McCauley against Tennessee. But if we can unlock him and then wait until week 14 and get our visit, we could take an 80 overall defensive tackle potentially into the offseason. And that would be fantastic. Arthur Robertson, a similar situation. The only reason we're not in the lead is because of other teams having their visits. So... We'll just continue to grind away there. We are in the lead with Derek Bentley and Chris Whitaker and Fred Bell. Uh, I just added Austin Sims, uh, and it looks like that should be something that we can jump in on. So a lot of these guys were in a great spot. We'll give the rest of our points to George Smith right now. And then I think that's what we're going to do is we'll just find uh, a couple of players that it looks like we'll have an easy chance to jump up into the rankings with, like Luke Wright here, in fact, is immediately going to get some points. Um, and then we'll see if there's any visits to schedule. We have just a few points that we can scout some of these guys that I added. Uh, Steve Vinson is just a fullback. I wanted to get a, a true fullback potentially onto the board, and it seems like we could pick him up only 200 behind. So 60 overall for a fullback, I think, in this game is pretty solid. Joe Rivero, the middle linebacker, goes up. How about uh, Javier Sanders? It's a 69. Bryant London goes up to a 76. And we're only a thousand behind there. So all of these guys that I added were, you know, about a thousand behind. And if teams aren't really going for them, you can make that up pretty quick. Uh, one player ready to schedule a visit. It is Vincent Young, the wide receiver. 89 speed, 75 acceleration. Very mediocre catching. You know, maybe not the best player that we could potentially pick up, but we'll send him to that NIU game. Try to get the complimentary visits as stacked up as we can. And uh, I mean, the goal for this season is just to try and sign a full 25 players. Anything that we can do to fill our class, I think will just make us better overall, almost no matter what. Uh, top 25, who are we rooting for to lose this week so that we can get as high ranked as possible? Purdue will play at number 23, Wisconsin. And honestly, it might help us if Purdue wins this and knocks Wisconsin down. Florida and Georgia play. That's number four versus number nine. We've got Michigan and Minnesota. Again, the number 24 team. Do we root for Michigan and hope to knock Minnesota out? You just don't know. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't mind it because, again, if we look at receiving votes, we are sitting at 29th behind UCF, Louisiana, and Clemson. So, again, just trying to come out, get a solid win against a team that's really struggling this year uh, and hope to be back in the top 25. We'll go ahead and just jump straight into this one. We will have to go on the road back to the state of Ohio, which has been uh, fairly solid for us this season. I'm kind of thinking hmm, green helmet, green helmet, white jersey, gray pants. We'll go with that. And Toledo, I actually really like to, a lot of Toledo's uniform options. Um, a lot of these do look a lot like Cal or West Virginia to me. And I'm not entirely sure. Let's just let's just go with a random one because you can't really go wrong with their color combinations. And I guess it's going to be alternate five. So it is a 72 overall split between both teams. They have the edge on offense, 72 to our 70, but we have the edge on defense, a 75 to their 73. So this should be a very evenly matched game. Us being on the road makes me a little bit worried, but the way that we've played this year compared to the way that they've played, I got to feel pretty confident. Coming into this game, 
uh, completely opposite for us. Our offense has really been bad. Theirs has been pretty solid. And then our defense has been pretty solid and their defense has been really bad. So uh, I kind of like that. Both units match up well against each other. It should be a hard fought game. It's just going to be whatever team can make the bigger plays. And certainly this will help their third best player. The tight end is injured. They've got a good left guard. They do break that 90 mark. An 88 overall strong safety is certainly going to cause some problems for us. All of our players, again, still on hot streaks, but 81 and 80 overall. So just not a whole lot of strength there. And it's a cornerback and that tight end out. So the tight end is gone for the season, which is a bummer. I would hate it if we lost our third best player. And then a corner being out will certainly help maybe offset that strong safety that's 88 overall. Man, the weather we've been getting this season has been fantastic. Into the glass bowl uh, as it's another beautiful, beautiful day here. Uh, Maction ongoing this season. Tails never fails, which, you know, I feel like we've been pretty good on, on calling those this season. Again, we'll elect to kick this one off. Just a gentle three mile an hour breeze today as I got to say the glass bowl relatively empty. Not a whole lot of fans in attendance. That should definitely hurt Toledo's chances although the special teams coming out and making a play for them 35 yards on the return for Victor Clay four wide and a fullback in for Toledo they're gonna step back looking to throw on first down I can't get there in time we do give up six yards to Clay and I would say for a fullback, he's been pretty quick. So definitely a guy to watch out for. Trying to bring pressure. We get to the quarterback. We hit him, but he sheds the sack and is able to get the pass away. He just sails it into the stands, but it's enough to prevent a big loss and bring up a third and four. Watching for the run. It's going to be a pass, and there's a wide open man on the corner route. Sean Frederick takes it for 24 defense really had a chance to get off the field and couldn't capitalize so we'll see what we can do looking to bring pressure as they haven't run yet and there's the first carry the blitz gets there and a lots of four for Reggie Miller we've been getting a lot of interesting names this year uh I mean I guess Toledo's colors are similar to the Pacers but not the right Reggie Miller quarterback all the time in the world eventually finds James Royal over the middle for a first down feel like we should be bringing a lot of pressure because their offensive line hasn't been fantastic so far but uh, i just don't feel confident eric lane i feel confident in making a big tackle there we drop the fullback for a loss of two and i i just feel like it's really interesting that a fullback is the best running back that these guys have quarterback keeper on the read option oh that was embarrassing for us we know Reggie's definitely willing to run. We just need to be able to get to him. Quarterback again, stepping back. This one sailed out of the back of the end zone. We're getting occasional stops, but not enough in a row. And I might be giving up a touchdown here. Uh, Because I'm not going to let them just run on us. Expecting the run. It's another option. Quarterback kept it. Thankfully, the blitz was enough. So we stop him. A loss of two or a gain of two. And we'll just go five-man rush on this third goal, trying to hold them to a field goal on this one. Wouldn't be surprised if the QB keeps it on an option. Pressure not going to get there. Need to get this tackle, and that's going to be a face mask? No, fourth and goal. We got away with one there. The ref's definitely making a mistake, as uh, we're just going to go in the safe zone. Don't want to give up anything stupid. We will allow them to take their three points and just expect that our on offense can come out and work a little bit better than that so as this is the first kick return of the game for us we will return it pool way out towards the sideline is gonna feel that he's got some blocks oh my <laughs> so much space and i just ran out of bounds oh we're starting inside the 25 could have been much much more than that pressure coming early on this one just gonna scramble with albert johnson a play that you will almost never see but he gets five yards that was best case scenario for that broken play felt like the pressure got there early and we're going to our our money play triple option early in this game pressure trying to get there durham finch gets the pitch out picks up a block and gets us to midfield Let's just keep running the football. Give it a designed handoff to Durham. Cutting it back. Finding the space. Getting north there. That's another seven. 
We'll see if we can exploit this pass coverage for these guys over the middle early. It's Mark Morris. Simple slant route. That's going to work 90% of the time. Albert accurate on his first throw of the game. So that's always good to see. And we'll hand it off again here, trying to follow the fullback. And just making some moves. Durham starting the game great. Another eight yards. Jerome Simmons is going to come in for his first carry on this second and two out towards the edge. Need the blocking to hold up. It doesn't. The spin move, though, allowed us to kind of avoid getting hit in the backfield and actually manage to get a yard there. Well, what if we just keep running? Can they stop us is the question. Third one. I'm calling this four down territory. Durham Finch. Just enough. The block was not good, but he got the yard necessary. That'll give us another first down. Now at the 26-yard line again, we'll step back, looking to throw on the play action. Nobody open. I'm throwing this one away. Please, they're going to give me an intentional grounding on that. Albert, what are you doing? Intentional grounding offense. That's what happens when your quarterback's awareness is super low. And instead of just sailing it, you know, 10 yards further downfield, he puts it where nobody else is. That is so brutal. And now a strip sack. What a disaster. All on Albert as well. I guess a little bit on the offensive line on that play. But Toledo now with a chance to make it a two-score game. Nothing will ever be easy for this uh, team. It's kind of what I've come to realize. Trying to bring some pressure on this one. They're going to hand it off a little draw. We'll get stopped in the backfield. A loss of four on that play. Big blitz working well there. Got to ask the defense for a lot on this drive. Needing a stop. This one, another draw play. Eric Lane needs to get that tackle. Oh, we can't have that. That's going to give them a third and six to work with. I'm going to use her D-end again just to try and get pressure on the quarterback, and it doesn't matter. Wide open over the middle. You would think someone would be there. It's not the case for us, though. And it's another first down as they cross midfield. Toledo doing work. This one's going to be a run. Eric Lane... Again, unable to get the tackle. Another stiff arm cheese. Victor Clay showing the strength of a fullback. He hasn't had a crazy amount of success running the ball. But it's been way more than he should have at this point. Trying to step back and bring some pressure. Just strung that one out. That's a loss of five. Can we get off the field on third and seven? The way that our third down defense has been all season long, I certainly don't feel confident here. But we'll get a chance to think about it as the first quarter comes to a close. We're down 3 0. Offense started their drive really well and then had an absolute collapse. The defense has done, honestly, a decent enough job, but uh, you just got to put it together. So, again, third and seven. Can we get the stop to start the second quarter? We do get the ball to start the third, which is nice, as that one. Seemed like somebody should have been open, but Eric Lane just gets a hand on the ball. Fourth and seven. Pump formation comes out for Toledo, but we are going to be again in the safe zone. I just don't trust anything that I've been seeing from the, the AI recently. Hoping that this one takes a good bounce and it will just go into the end zone. We'll take our touchback and let the offense try to do some work here. Last drive ended poorly. Albert took a huge, like, 13-yard intentional grounding penalty and then immediately uh, fumbled the ball while getting sacked. So the goal is just not to get penalties on this drive and not to have a turnover, which probably means just running the ball an awful lot. Durham Finch, <laughs> he should not have gotten three yards, but they tackled him over a defender. How about third and two? Certainly nowhere near four-down territory yet, but we're going to go read option. Handing the ball off to Jerome Simmons, and he's got us the first down. Why throw ball when run work? I mean, I say that, but immediately we're going to throw the ball. Hopefully we hold on to it. Just go with the check down. Give it to Zach Wilson. He makes a nice cut. He makes another nice cut in the shoestring tackle. Might have saved a touchdown. Zach Wilson, a big 23 yards. I'm just so impressed with the way that some of these players move. Seemingly at random. This one a run. Durham Finch continues to do well. Eight yards there. He's got almost 50 already on six or seven carries. We'll give him another one. No, Jerome Simmons will come in. We'll give him another one. A little counter trying to make some moves. 
Not able to build up ahead of steam. I just had to get north, get that first down. The sixth first down for the offense. Now they need to find the end zone. Play action pass on this first down. Just going to go check down to Durham. Juke doesn't work, but he breaks the tackle and he's going to score. Defensive end not quick enough to catch up to him. And the strong, strong running from Durham Finch gets him 31 yards into the end zone on cue. Right as I said, we needed it. That's going to give us the lead 7-3 to three with four minutes left in the half. Let Jones boot this one away and hope that the defense gives us a stop. If we can get a quick stop, let the offense have plenty of time to work with. We could take a pretty big lead going into the half and then get the ball and, and really just put this one away. Now I say that like it's, you know, not a possibility that we just completely collapse here. But I got to stay positive. Looks like they're going to go to the air on first down. Quarterback has a man open. It's Eric Lane getting beat by Tyree Parker in coverage. Not really able to get uh, into the formation I wanted as quickly. We're bringing pressure. Not really on purpose. It was just I had to pick a play. And it burns us. Tyree Parker, another big catch. Rockets have shifted into uh, a hurry up. It's burning us. And it continues to burn us. Another big catch, 14 yards, and they get out of bounds. I wanted this drive to be quick so that we had time to work with, but I didn't want it to be quick like this. Defense needs to figure something out real quick here to get a stop. Somebody's going to be open again. And it's another eight yards. Well, I don't know if these guys have big, big play potential. I don't know if they can score, so we're just going to start trying to bring blitzes and hope that we can do stuff like that. We get a big stop. Third and three. But Blair's injured. Frank Blair, maybe? I feel like his first name is Frank. We don't want to see him out. We don't have a lot of depth to begin with. Hopefully, we don't get burned too badly. Lane, I'm using good coverage for me. And it's a coverage sack on Reggie Miller. He's going to lose yards. I'm taking the timeout. Fourth and 11. They're going to step back looking to kick this one. So, I'm putting the punt team out. They've got a three-mile-an-hour headwind. This is an awfully long punt to begin with. No way. He had the distance. It's good. Toledo makes it a one-point game. An absolute rocket of a cannon there for the Toledo kicker. He had another couple of yards on that, too. Just, uh, uh, wow. Impressive. Uh, okay, well, maybe a decent return here for Poole. Breaks a tackle, gets us across the 30. We will definitely be able to work with that. Two minutes, 45 seconds left in this half means we have more than enough time to run our offense. Question is, which offense is going to show up? Starting with just a gain of one is certainly not great news. But I'm not going to let that dictate too much. 13 runs to three passes to this point. I don't think anybody should be surprised by that. Durham Finch gets us the first down. And Blair is out for the game with a bruised sternum. So the defense taking a hit there. Hopefully it doesn't matter. Why? Maybe not open. I tried to throw it open. If he caught that, I think he was gone based on the way the defender played it. Unfortunately, he was able to get a hand on the ball. So second and 10. We're going back to the triple option. Simmons and Finch as the two options. We're giving it to Jerome. Oh my gosh, that one was blown up immediately. It's third and long. Part of me thinks we should just uh, allow the clock to burn down here, but I got to be confident that we'll pick this up. Pressure coming, throwing it to Wilson. Zach holds on to it. Albert throwing a dot there. Minute and 41 left on the clock. We'll bring Mark Morris in motion on a little jet sweep out of the hurry up. Plenty of space for him to work with, and that'll stop the clock again with a first down. Everything that we can do to keep this ball on the ground I think is super beneficial. We will fake the fly on this one and then hand it off to Jerome Simmons. He's not going to get anything, though. And now I have to be a little bit concerned about the clock. A minute and 12. So we'll have to look to start throwing a little bit more. Just going to give it to Durham Finch. <laughs> he dropped it. Oh, that's brutal. So we went from what should have been a third and very short to a third and 10 because of that one. Put Finch on the wheel. Got to step back again. And I'm giving it to Morris. Needs to break that tackle. Stiff arm cheese going the wrong direction. Just three yards. It's fourth and seven. And I think we have to go for this. It's a 46-yard field goal. And if I'm being honest with myself, I just don't think that we can get that. 
So try and get this all ready inside 30 seconds in case we fail throwing it. I was late. I was late making the throw. Kevin Dunlap, a great dive to deflect that one away. Turnover on downs. Now Toledo has all their timeouts in 25 seconds. Maybe to take the lead before the half. I almost think Curtis has to step up on that one just to make sure that he has a chance at the catch. Don't blame him, though, for playing the line to gain. Man goes in motion. Step back, looking to stop the throw. They're throwing it long. Oh, ho, ho, he dropped it. Oh, we got burned. Should have been a huge catch, but it's not the case. Oh, they're going to run this. I'm bringing pressure. Got to get the stop here. Oh, come on. We can't bring that big of a blitz and have that happen. Now they're going to take the timeout and start bombing it again. And we're going to go man up three deep. 16 seconds. I guess I do realize that their kicker has a really good uh, leg, so I can't give up too much here as they actually run it. I'm going to take the timeout. 13 seconds, fourth and seven. You never know. Let's send pool back. See if we can create some magic on the return. I don't know. 13 seconds. Maybe let Albert throw up a bomb after that. I got to hope for the best. This one very fieldable. I see a pancake on one of the gunners down there which actually might hurt us quite a bit. Poole gets the corner, makes another man miss. One second on the clock. That was the longest second of my life. 29-yard return there, though. Well, let's see if Albert has the arm for this one, and we'll see if he has enough time to get it off as well. Just one second on the clock. Got to wait as long as I can. Heave one up short of the end zone. It is not caught. Good coverage from Toledo. Not strong enough from Albert. Clock comes to uh, uh, just triple zeros. End of the half. Up one point. Getting the ball. I don't know how I feel about this. Offense has done okay. But two drives have stalled out out of the three. Defense, well, they're doing okay. Uh, the first field goal they gave up was good of them to only give up a field goal. And the second one, they did a good job. And Toledo just has a really good kicker. Um, We just got to use Durham Finch. Let him continue to carry the team. And that might be enough to get the win and get back into the top 25. We will return this opening kick. So hopefully Poole gets a, oh gosh, a decent chance. This one five yards deep in the end zone. We're going to bring it out. Good blocks. Great blocks. Corey Poole off to the races. There's a flag down though. He crossed the 45, but this is coming way back. Oh, the blocking. Too good. Courtney Smith, the fullback, gets called for it. We start at the 11. That's almost as bad as it possibly could have gotten. Well, we're going to go out of the Wildcat. Jerome Simmons handing it off to John Wilson on the little fly. And there's nothing there. <laughs> something. Just something has to work once for us. Let's go to the air now from the 10-yard line. Throw the check down and Stan Williams is going to get tackled immediately. I didn't think that guy would be there. Well, the offense certainly doesn't have it going right now. Third and 13 inside our own 10 to start the half. Maybe we can get something. I'm not holding my breath though. Stepping back. B might be open if we can get it there. Mitchell catches it in stride. He makes a man miss. He actually tackled somebody else. And the biggest play of the game is Mitchell can walk it into the end zone. Oh my goodness, Sean made a great throw or a great grab on a great throw from Albert and then just the defender tackling the other defender. 90 plus yards to the house. You couldn't ask for a bigger play there. It's crazy how quickly uh, the, the feeling and the momentum of a football game can change because you certainly <laughs> felt like it was on Toledo's side there. And just like that, it goes swinging in our favor. Two fullbacks in now for Toledo. I mean, we'd be foolish not to blitz, right? If you're putting two back, two fullbacks in, oh gosh, you can't be doing that good. But our coverage just isn't good. Amir Allen, that was a lot of drive to get 10 yards there. Now I did kick the extra point. Thought about going for two to make it two score game, but kick the extra point, make them go for the two point conversion later on. Try to bring pressure, expecting the run again. Eric Lane, a weird tackle, but a big one. That looked like a move straight out of the WWE, but it works out. And McNeil is the runner. I feel like this is going to be a handoff. 
Never mind, they're stepping back to throw. Can we cover it? Can anything happen? Quarterback throws it away. I don't know if that was a bad throw or if he was just trying to get rid of it, but we hold on defense. And that is exactly what you like to see. Fourth and one, defense forces the three and out. And again, the momentum continues to stay on our side as we'll have a very returnable one. Stan Williams is going to return it. Unfortunately, not Corey Poole, because if it's Corey Poole, it's a touchdown. But still, Stan Williams has a chance, and he's going to take it to the house. Talk about momentum fully on our side. Stan Williams got benched as a return man, comes back in for that punt and takes it 72 yards to the house. And now it is up to the defense to really put this one to bed. If they can get another stop and the offense can score again, we will be looking so phenomenal. That return man, Patrick Fine, just hurtled immediately for some reason. And just midway through this third quarter, we've already scored two touchdowns, trying to bring some pressure on this play. Kind of expecting a run. It is going to be a handoff. Quarterback kept it. I got frozen. Oh, this is not good. He's not going to be able to score. He's not quick enough for that. But it's still a huge 34-yard pickup haven't been able to prevent him from running the ball on those uh, read options. Need to figure something out there. This one a run up the middle, not going for anything. And I'm bringing pressure on this second down. Probably expecting them to pass, but if we can get pressure... Oh, and if they can just continue to drop those diving catches, we'll be all right. After Blair got injured, it's Royal who is coming as the backup. And he's been burned a couple of times, but... Maybe put just enough pressure on that one. Trying to step back in coverage. They almost like ran into us. Fourth and seven. That's another stop for the defense. Pump formation comes out. Corey Poole back to return this one. Again, though, we're in the safe zone. I can't risk uh, a fake punt on this one. This is not fieldable. We'll let that bounce into the end zone. Take our touch back. And let the offense try to come back out and get back to work. A touchdown. Hell, even a field goal on this drive would be phenomenally huge. Trying to run it. So, Jerome Simmons got four yards. It looked like he had a chance for a lot more. And with me feeling relatively confident in Albert's passing abilities today, we will go play action. Four-man rush. I'm going to go check down. Give it to Stan Williams. He actually made a really nice move to turn around and keep his momentum and get the first down. Now, at this point, I got to dial it in, though. Uh, sometimes what happens is we start to have a little bit of success passing the football, and then I start to pass way more than we ever should. So we just got to keep it on the ground and stay grounded. I can't allow a few big passing plays to go to my head and change our play calling. So let Durham Finch just continue to run, or Jerome Simmons or Stan Williams in this case. Hell if I know who's running the ball. Gives us a third and three to work with. And there's no reason for me not to just run this one up the middle. Hope the offensive line gets a push. It's good enough. It's long enough. And Stan Williams gets that first down. That's an eight-yard carry. Third string running back coming in and making a difference in this game. And now we're going to Pat Robinson. Something Robinson. And we're going to let him do some work. We are using all of the running backs today. Uh, let everybody get a touch and it's working really well Stan Williams another 8 yard pickup we're running them to death right now Toledo's defense no answer for our offense right now as we will go back to this triple option forced to hand it off but Smith does something when Courtney Smith comes in and gets 7 yards you know it's not going well for your D now the question is, can I make them pay on this one? I'm expecting pressure. We're going to go play action. They don't really bring a whole lot. Trying to just extend the play, getting rid of it. No intentional grounding. Well, I'm fine with that. That was a play just to reset the defense, force them to recognize that we still could pass the ball, and then immediately go back to handing it off and give it back to Pat Robinson for another first down. I think the most disheartening thing for Toledo at this point is just how dominant this drive has been and how long it's taken. In fact, I'm tempted to run this play to end the third quarter, but why? Clock is our friend right now. I'm going to let it burn out. Let's get into the fourth quarter and really put the time pressure on Toledo. We're up 21-6 after two huge plays. Give us big touchdowns and shift the momentum entirely in our favor. 
Offense just got to keep running the football. And the defense just can't give up anything big. And we'll walk away with a win. So 10 plays already on this drive. Play number 11. Little handoff to Stan Williams. Ooh, they got pressure in the backfield. Stan narrowly avoided it and got the seven yards. And we are now on the doorstep of the red zone. Giving it back to Stan, potentially on the read option. No, Albert's going to keep it. He's got some blocks. He's got a lot of blocks and a slide down inside the 15. Jerome and Durham able to sit as the backup running backs are doing such a phenomenal job. Pat Robinson, again, nine yards on the carry. They just can't stop it right now. Everybody who's getting a touch is making the most of it. This play... I could expect to go wrong. We'll bring Robertson in motion. Give it to Stan on a toss play. And toss plays don't tend to work great in this game, but that one does. Stan Williams four yards into the end zone. His second touchdown of the game. And that should put this one out of reach as we'll go up 28-6 to in the fourth quarter. So another kickoff away. We'll hope to just contain them inside the 20. We've done decent so far on the day. That was actually a good return. And at this point, I'm going to be expecting a lot of passing coming from Toledo, so we'll see how the coverage can hold up. I would love to see a turnover, although I certainly won't expect it. Step back to throw on that one. Quarterback gets sacked. The coverage is there again, and we just dominated. Definitely have shattered the glass bowl here as we are really taking away the home field advantage. That was... A great corner route. Too soft on the coverage for us. And props to Toledo for not quitting on the game. But the fact that they've been held just to two field goals is impressive. And one of those field goals uh, was a really nice kick from the kicker. So it's not even like they got really close and just couldn't punch it in. We hold the slip screen just to a gain of three, which is always good news for us. Again, expecting them to pass. They will step back, trying to cover it. Quarterback gets sacked again. And the defensive line is having their way right now. It's third and 15, and Toledo is two of eight on the day on their third down conversions. If we're not able to stop this one, you know that we're in trouble. Over the middle, I see somebody maybe coming open, and there it is. Mason gets it. We were just a little bit too soft on the coverage again there. Maybe we can bring something here. Again, trying to put some pressure on these guys. Seeing if we can get in there, maybe with Lane. They're going to hand it off, and Lane hits him in the backfield. That's a loss of three. We keep getting these plays. We just got to get the defense off the field now. We've held them to 187 yards of offense. We have 333 and uh, a big punt return. This one, another slip screen. Breedlove gets taken out. Walters can't get the stop. He's going to break that tackle, thankfully going out of bounds. Screen coverage hasn't been good right now. Well, screw it. I'm just going to keep bringing the pressure. Seeing if we can get these stops. Uh, another run up the middle. Another broken tackle. Thankfully, we're tackling him in bounds. The clock will be moving now inside three minutes. But we need more than what we've been getting so far. If we want to just complete this one well. Oh, that's going to help tremendously. False start from the offensive line. I like second and eight a whole lot more. The only negative uh, at this point is that they're in field goal range. Which is just a real shame. Over the middle, man wide open. And we can't stop him. Ah, that's so frustrating. The defense has played such a great game up to this point, but is just unable to get off the field right now. Can't do a single thing right, it seems like. You get one good play and then two bad ones. And there's another one, eight yards for them. We bring a big blitz. It's not quite right. We sit back into coverage. It's not quite right. Even when we get a sack on the quarterback, it's not enough in that sense. Uh, I would say it's a beautiful throw, but it was just awful coverage. Frederick wide open in the end zone, and Toledo gets in for the first time. We expect to see a two-point conversion here. And they have a defensive tackle somewhere out on the field here it says is a skill position which is very interesting trying to bring pressure we get to the quarterback oh almost had a chance to pick that one off we'll take it we get the stop still a big two score game the onside kicks will start to come from toledo now with 215 on the clock we field the first one hold on to it through the contact and that'll be it 
I'm mostly just frustrated with the defense giving up a touchdown when they were doing so well. Would have loved to keep them just to the two field goals, but sometimes it's not meant to be. Uh, Toledo's still taking timeouts, though, so maybe they want us to score again. Only two yards gained on that one, so it's second and eight, but we'll keep running. Give it to Pat Robinson again. No blocking there from the middle. Good rush from the linebacker. Lost a two that time. And unfortunately for Toledo, uh, I don't care about getting a first down. We've already won this game, so we're going to run it. Go with the counter. Force them to take their timeout. If they can get the stop, Pat Robinson. Oh, so close. It's fourth and two. We're going to go for it. There's no chance for us to kick a field goal this long, and I'm certainly not going to punt the ball away. So to really seal the game, we'll give it to Robertson up the middle. And there we go. Jeremy, fullback dive, gets his four yards, and that'll be all she wrote. Of course, I am still going to be running the football. Another first down would be fantastic. Uh, and I want yards for my players, so Robinson can get three more. That play will take us below one minute. We'll run it one more time, and then we'll take our knee just so that we can get the XP. Second and seven, Robinson again, making some cuts. Getting a few more yards added on to his career stats here. And once again on this season, it's the victory formation able to take the field. Albert Johnson taking a knee. Give us that free 10 XP as we get another win. This one expected, of course. Toledo does come into this game 1-6 on the season, so unfortunately for them, they won't be bowl eligible 1-7 for the Rockets. I'm sure that they don't like that, but I certainly do because we are now bowl eligible at 5 and or 6-2, and two, I think. Right? Week 9? Maybe it's just 5 wins. I don't... What's our record? <laughs> I, don't, I don't honestly know. What I do know is that Stan Williams is player of the game, deservedly so, two really big touchdowns. And also, that might be enough for us to be ranked back inside the top 25. We were sitting at 29th, coming out and dominating a conference opponent. Certainly will help. Just a few teams need to lose in front of us, and we could be back in the rankings. I gotta say, the way that we started this game, I was not feeling confident, but we were able to turn it on in the second half and put it to bed early. Held Toledo to 36 rushing yards. We gave up 204 passing. Most of that coming at the end of the game when really it didn't matter. We ran for 165 ourselves and put up 185 through the air. Good job from Albert there. He did have the strip sack, uh, the fumble there. But other than that, he had honestly a very solid game. I would potentially think about going for him for player of the game if it weren't for Stan Williams. Seven carries for 36 yards, but two total touchdowns. One of them being an absolutely massive punt return taken to the house. Eric Lane's our defensive player of the game. Uh, you know, I don't think that I'm upset with that. No one player really stood out to me, but three tackles for losses, a pretty solid stat line. So it's six and two as we are now bowl eligible and we'll advance the week and hope either we get some recruits ready to visit or we're ranked or potentially both as we'll head into the week 10 bye. Well, recruiting-wise, dang it, Craig McCauley, that defensive tackle, I was worried that was going to lock us out. Well, he does more than that. He commits to Tennessee, so that's a really big loss for us in a battle that we certainly had a chance with. Uh, ready to visit on Derek Bentley, the 78 overall quarterback, and Cliff Reed, the 67 overall cornerback. And are we ranked top 25? Not yet. Sitting at 6-2, and two, we just might be pipped out. Looks like Minnesota actually may have won, which is a shame. But Purdue did beat Wisconsin, so one team should have fallen. Florida was able to beat Georgia. Oh my gosh, 45-7 to seven just absolutely took them to the slaughter. Uh, not a whole losses, though, or not a whole lot of losses. Wisconsin and Minnesota both lost, and they both just drop one spot, which is really frustrating. Uh, receiving votes, we... <laughs> They couldn't drop one of those two guys out to let us in. We're sitting at 26th as Nebraska and Oklahoma State fell out. And I guess a couple teams around us must have taken some losses as well. But so, so close to being ranked. How about the media poll? Are we ranked there? No, not ranked in the media. How about the BCS? So this is the second week, I think, of the BCS poll. And we are, well, okay. We're ranked in the one that matters at the end of the day. Uh, 25th in the BCS. 
I'll take it. I am more than happy with that. Our wins aren't necessarily incredible as, wait, look at our, uh, look at the prestige stuff. It's all glitched out. There's like a, a star hidden in there. Will it fix itself? It fixes itself now. That was really, really weird. It said that we had two stars and then like a random third one. But we're in a good spot. Keep winning. Uh, you know, we could take a loss here or there. I just want to make it back to the MAC Conference Championship. Even if we don't win it, just give ourselves a chance to go to as good of a bowl game as possible. Unfortunately, that is going to have to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And then down in the comments, let me know what you thought about that game. We're starting to get some very cool storylines with some of the players on our team, which is just always fun. And once you've done that, head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. It's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamp mod if you don't have it already. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the gray boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.